Yeah, today I want to just kind of introduce you into the world of uh, chasing bad guys all over the world and uh, give you a little peek. How many of you ever just kind of thought to yourself, you know, I wonder if I'm good enough, just good enough to get away and create this crime and walk away with a bunch of money and I'm good and I'm sad. How, how many of you think you could do that? A couple of you, okay. We'll, we'll see after the end of the, end of the talk today. But, uh, and, but by the way, you can get away, but it's, it's tough uh, uh, with that. So the, the topic today, uh, like I said, is you can run, but you can't hide. And so what I'm going to do is give you a peek into uh, uh, just a little bit about what is the state of the union of our world uh, and, and law enforcement, as well as then a peek into some of the technical tools that we're utilizing uh, to be able to catch guys. Uh, and at the same time, uh, then we're going to give you a peek into some of the cases that we've actually worked, and while we can't name names, uh, with the exception I think one case and, and that we can because it's public. Uh, so, uh, so we'll hope to have some fun today. Good. Um, there's two divisions of our company, just, uh, just a, the uh, CIS, which is the investigative chasing bad guys, and then we have E-Enforce, which is enforcing against uh, counterfeit gray market unauthorized sellers for global corporations that we run as well, uh, which is a whole other topic in, in, in itself. Good. As um, uh, as was introduced, is that we now have worked a thousand plus cases. That it's not the normal thing that you know you guys being in cybersecurity and IT that you think about. In fact, I was talking to someone last night and they said, you know, well, we think that, you know, basically attribution is a waste of time in an incident response. And, and I said, I agree with you. Uh, but it's not the type of cases we're getting. We're getting the type of cases that fall outside of the realm of the FBI, either because um, it, they're just so busy with can't take it, or it is of the flavor that the Bureau would take, but the individuals involved don't want to involve them because of the sensitivity of the topics that we wind up doing. And so most everything that I'm going to talk to you about today is stuff that goes on a lot, but you never read about it. It's not in the paper. You're not aware of it. And I pray that none of you had to go through it. Uh, and so things like extortion, uh, things like uh, cyber stalking, things like harassment, revenge porn, uh, fraud, uh, y you name it, across the board uh, that we're going after, but has reached a level that is serious enough, you know, that our clients pay us uh, typically uh, in a range of about five to fifty thousand dollars a case 
just to do that. So you understand that it's serious. This isn't uh, what I call baby daddy on baby daddy on Facebook type cases. Um, go ahead. So the state of the union right now <clears throat> is that crimes are outpacing uh, the police departments. Uh, if you go to just about any police department around the country, they are not equipped, do not have the tools, do not have the training, uh, do not have the uh, resources to work cyber crimes. And so you go to them and they either ignore you, laugh at you, turn you away, do whatever. Uh, and we've had, and I'll, I'll talk about one case later that we did right here in this town, uh, and ultimately we wound up getting the guy arrested, but it, it was an act of Congress just to get the police department to take it. Uh, go ahead. We also see that cyber crimes are outpacing our state attorney's offices. The cyber crimes are not easy to prosecute. Uh, There's so many factors involved of bringing someone, uh, you know, and, and arresting them. Uh, and a lot of the state attorneys are just, a, they're, they're not up to speed. They don't see a lot of these types of cases. Uh, and if we do get involved with the state attorney's office is that we're having to kind of walk them through and coach them through, okay, here's why you have them, here's why you've got a good case, those types of things. Judges, same thing. Um, you get in court and you're trying to explain a complex uh, type of a case uh, and you got to make it real simple. So how do you, you know? So part of the job is bringing in uh, how do you how do you make it simple for the jury and for the uh, judges to understand. And sometimes you're just going before the judge, and and so how do you take those complex ideas so that you can wind up getting an, an arrest? Another aspect is that you know what we're seeing is that there's a lot of money to be made in cybercrime. Uh, just in the business email compromise is what 1.2 billion dollars uh, that's being uh, lost uh, by companies that are getting taken on uh, scams uh, where they're losing money. Uh, we're working with one big title insurance company uh, that uh, they're losing millions per month strictly from their title agents of being taken uh, from business email compromise scams. But how many times do you read about that in the paper? The companies don't want you to know that. The title companies don't want you to know that. So everything is hush hush. Good. Um, we're seeing a trend uh, in some of the larger crimes where there is coordination between uh, what we call cyber criminals and uh, nation state actors, uh, where they're coordinating uh, their efforts. Uh, and that starts to get a little bit interesting when we get involved in that. Uh, that. Uh, we're seeing a lot more today, and I'll talk about a, a, a case of extortion uh, that when you hear it, you'll go, holy wow, what would I do uh, with that? But more and more people are being extorted for a variety of reasons, uh, for, uh, for real money or for real reputation or for you know, some sort of a leverage uh, on that individual. Um, as you guys, if you're in cybersecurity, you absolutely know this, is that you can go out and get just about any kind of uh, uh, weapon uh, today to go utilize that are what used to be CIA level type of uh, weaponry. Uh, you know, go to open source and it's out there available. Go to WikiLeaks and go pull down, you know, what they stole from the, uh, from the CIA and go adapt that to make it your own zero day. So it's just getting more and more complex as we see these attacks. Good. Um, another trend that's happening, and I was up at the uh, FBI um, uh, cybersecurity conference in January, and, you know, a real big concern, and, and it's, it's, it's catch-22, and if we pulled this room, you know, it'd probably be split down the middle of 50-50. On one side, we all want privacy, uh, and the other side is, is that if someone of your family got killed and there was key information on a, on a cell phone uh, and you couldn't get to it, you know, you would, you know, you'd be pretty upset about that. The law enforcement couldn't go now prosecute that person. They get away because the evidence is there. And that's the challenge that we're seeing. And then more and more stuff are being uh, encrypted. Uh, I think, what, last year, correct me my numbers, I think it was like 17, what, 1,700 phones. 
7,776 phones uh, that the FBI took in last year, and 60% of them they could not produce any kind of evidence off of them uh, because of encryption and passwords and those types of things. And what we're seeing is a lot of the tech companies are purposely, uh, you know, trying to set these things. And on one side, they're going, you know, we want all our users to feel comfortable because there's privacy. And on the flip side of it, it's become very, very difficult for law enforcement uh, in, in dealing with this. Um, we all know that cybercrime is not going to go away. Uh, with the Internet of Things, uh, with absolutely not much security involved with them. Uh, and if I'm a bad guy and I'm really, you know, and we're not, and I'm, again, I'm not talking about enterprise networks and those types of things, but if I make you a target and I want to come after you, uh, it can make your life miserable in a lot of ways just by the insecurities of things like the Internet of Things as well as the ability to spread disinformation across the internet as we've recently seen in some of the elections of what's happened you know with the uh, Russian inter interference well you can do the same thing on the, on the individual level and I can you know and literally the stuff that we know how to do and we go after criminals that are doing is you can sink a company in a period of you know three to four months just like that uh, just by knowing how to spread that information okay. as I said local law enforcement has very few solutions for the general public Good. And, and again, the Bureau, uh, in, in all honesty, they've got their hands full. Uh, and if, if any of you all know, uh, anybody in the agencies, and uh, they'll tell you that, you know, they've got the hacking of government agencies, intellectual property theft, uh, protection of national infrastructure, and all of the stuff is wide open. And in relationship to cybercrime, you know, they're going after the guys that are, you know, creating the, major botnet to try to go take them down, you know, in a big way, but not all the other stuff that's happening in the middle. But so that's why um, folks like us exist, is that is to fill that gap to be able to go after people uh, that have committed these crimes, both civilly and criminally, uh, develop the evidence and put it together in a way and working with legal uh, counsel in order, or, or law enforcement in order to take them down. And what we find with law enforcement is that they will cooperate uh, if you're able to bring them a case that's wrapped up in a red bow. But you already got the evidence, you already got it laid out there, and you've done it in a forensic way, and they're, they're, then they're happy with that. But the interesting thing is that the number one reason that we get hired that is people are saying, who the hell are you, and how can I find out where you are? You see, if I'm an attorney and if I know your name, it's pretty easy for me to go after you, right? But everything we get starts at anonymous. No clue. No clue. All we have is fingerprints of what was done in a crime and if you if you don't believe it or not, the bottom line is everything you touch electronically has fingerprints and has ability to be able to be traced. Now, the question is, do you have enough money to go trace that? Uh, you know, or if you get the bureau's interest, uh, then obviously they have the resources. But also understanding that one of the other challenges of chasing cyber criminals is jurisdiction. None of this stays in America. It all bounces around the world. And so then how do you pursue someone, you know, that just frauded me out of, out of you know, uh, you know $300,000 and is sitting in Nigeria? How do, you, how do you do that? And these are some of the flexibilities that we've been able to do as a private agency because we can do a lot of stuff that just is very difficult, time-consuming, et cetera, coming from normal law enforcement. And again, I am you know, ex-law ex enforcement, and so when I talk about law enforcement, I understand them and work with them every day and, and appreciate the job that they do. So what we've learned to do is how to utilize technical, investigative, and legal strategy in order to be able to bring these cyber criminals, uh, you know, to, uh, to prosecution. And it can't be done in a vacuum. Legal doesn't work because if I don't know who it is, 
I can do technical things and figure out something, but if I don't have legal, I can't prosecute it. And quite frankly, in the middle of all this, is it takes an investigative mind to basically play uh, the chess game with the cyber criminals in order to outsmart them and figure out where they're, where they're coming from. So let's talk about some of the advanced technical capabilities that we utilize. Go ahead. Uh, actually click that. And I'm going to put this up and see if you can hear this. How many of you uh, saw the show Hunted? Anybody you see that? Can, can you all hear that? Can you all hear that at all? Don't worry about it. Click the next one. Hunted was a show. I, I was surprised that they had it on TV. Uh, it was a reality TV show, but it involved a bunch of folks that ex-NSA, uh, CIA, uh, DEA, FBI, etc. for chasing uh, folks. And they set up a scenario that they had, I don't, I don't know, a certain number of couples. And that uh, they told them in advance they were going to be, you know, game attendants. And, and then uh, one day, you know, maybe a few months later, they come up to you, tap you on the shoulder, run. And so how do you run, and how do you not get detected, and how do you do all the things? And, and, and uh, it was really kind of interest, it was interesting in one sense, but like I said, I was really surprised that they were giving up some of the technology that they were giving up, uh, because, uh, and, and while the technology was accurate, I think some of the applications was TV stuff, and the rules that they put on them was, you know, kind of tight as to how they did that, but the winner, if you could get away and not get caught, get found, uh, you'd win, I think it was a quarter of a million dollars or something like that. So that was the show. It was kind of, kind of fun. But, uh, but quite frankly, a lot of the tools they used, uh, were accurate. Good. Um, as we all know today is that we're in a globally connected world. How many people in this room today have an iPhone? Or have a phone, period. Cell phone. Everybody, right? Everybody on this planet has a phone today. Alright? But I don't think most people realize what you can get from an investigative viewpoint from a phone. Okay? So let's look at some of that. Good. I can get your exact geolocation. I can get your call histories. I can get your email history. I can get your texting history. I can get your pictures and the geos where you were on those pictures. I can get your unique fingerprint from uh, browsers and the phone. I can get your browser type. I can get your IMSI identifiers. I can determine whether you're moving or stationary at the time. I can get your IP history. I can get what applications you're running on the phone. I can get your real identity. I can get your payment history. I can get your social media history. I can get all of your contacts. And I can get all your call log history. So when you combine technology along with legal, it's a pretty powerful piece of information in being able to track somebody down. So if you're going to run, who are the couple of people that, you know, raised their hand back there, get rid of your damn cell phone, okay? And cause, uh, cause yeah, you will be found. Uh, one of the things that we have capability of doing is that if we have a uh, cell phone number, uh, is that we can track that phone anywhere in the world. I can put it right on your head, know where you're at. Uh, doesn't matter if it's a burner phone, doesn't matter what it is from that aspect, it can be tracked. Uh, and that's a kind of scary thing when you think about it, is that someone being able to uh, find you. Uh, but, and I'll show you later in, in, a, in a few cases where some of this absolutely came into play. Um, this is really more for uh, law enforcement, and private intelligence agencies. Um, the state of the the state of what really is going on out there today is that there are law enforcement, there's government agencies, and then there's private agencies. If you remember years ago, you had Blackwater, you know, that came out that started becoming the private military, right, to go out and fight wars to basically for deniable plausibility. Well, you've got the same thing with several different agencies around the world that are, most of them are ex-spooks, okay, that have created companies 
that are private intelligence agencies that have access to do some pretty scary things. So, for instance, here's one of the uh, things that, go, no, go back, is, so if I have a phone number, is that, and by the way, this is not connected to any of the local providers, so it's not trackable by that. Uh, it's set up in a, a variety of networks. It'll intercept 2G, 3G, and 4G. All you need is an IMSI or, M, uh, or a MSISDN it would require basically your phone number. Unlimited interception range. Can intercept calls, SMS, call-related information. Detects dialing and dialed phone numbers of the phone. Uh, provides estimated location in both parties of the call nationwide uh, or na international for that matter. Selective blocking for specific IMSI nationwide uh, can change specific mobile from 3G, 4G, 2G, and unlimited number of tracking the network members. So if I am tracking Al Qaeda and I have a good number that I can get from Intel, as you can now that with this type of stuff, they can now grab that number, all the numbers that they're talking to and then track them geolocation real live time, okay? And uh, so, uh, and so take the scenario, like in that show where they were run you can, but you can't hide, is that they'd have a, a cell number, uh, you know, of maybe, you know, your best friend or your mom or your dad, what have you, that then you call them and try to get some help on your run and now they've got that, and now they got the cell phone number that you utilized, even though you bought it from Walmart, you know, uh, 20 minutes ago, <clears throat> and uh, and and now you can uh, track that. Not to mention getting the uh, camera footage and all the paperwork and everything that you did from Walmart. Uh, some other types of technology is available. Uh, this is kind of black box uh, technology, but. Uh, uh, it's actually legal in the way that it that it works. Uh, so, for instance, this was used uh, by some folks I know recently when the NFL went to go play at the uh, uh, in uh, in London uh, at the stadium there. And what they do is they set up a perimeter where it intercepts every phone number, cell, everything, communication including vehicles, and your vehicles, by the way, even your tire pressure gauges, et cetera, emit a certain uh, communication. Those can actually be tracked to a person and to a vehicle, and et cetera. So all of that information is being tracked live time. And what they do is then they preloaded it with terrorists that they know, known terrorists. And the moment that a known terrorist would walk in that environment, it immediately picks it up, immediately targets it to the closest CCTV, which can then zoom down in on it, which then security can wrap in around it. And that's the kind of security types of things that are out there today uh, to be able to provide security. If you're savvy, you can go to the, you know, to uh, sites that are available and go buy an IMSI catcher and intercept your own stuff. Uh, I think you can buy one for, I don't know, 1500 two grand, something like that. And, uh, and, and do you think the bad guys have this? Absolutely. You know, so it's the way they can reverse it on law enforcement. And so I know what's going on there and I can now intercept phone calls and et cetera and reverse it. Some other things that we utilize. <clears throat> how many people think WhatsApp is secure and we use it that way? Nobody? Good crowd. So, um, actually it is encrypted. You know, at, it is encrypted. That, that part's good. But the, and the communications back and forth are encrypted. But a lot of folks today, bad guys, are utilizing SMS of a variety of different types of things. And, you know, whether it's WhatsApp or Proton Mail or, you know, a variety of different secure, uh, supposedly secure, um, uh, communication devices. Signal. So, you know, all, 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 all of them have got their own all of them at the core level do have encryption and those are difficult from a forensic viewpoint to break open if you got the cell phone and do that and get what that information uh, looks like. However, when we're tracking a bad guy and they're communicating that, and let's, so let's say I'm a bad guy and I'm communicating uh, 
uh, with you and I'm extorting you for, you know, two, three thousand dollars a day that if you don't pay me each and every day is that I am going to expose your deepest, darkest secrets that will destroy your business uh, and your public and traded corporation. It will destroy your marriage. It will destroy everything about you uh, with that. So we kind of communicate with them. So we get involved and we become the victim, if you will, and communicate with them. And so we've got ways of penetrating that. Go ahead. Uh, what we call silent link weaponizing. And so we send whatever we think is pertinent related to, you know, gosh, they want me to send them $3,000 or $100,000 through Western Union. So fine, here's my receipt. Right? Ah, how much did you send me? Bang, got you. Okay? So we utilize those types of traps and ID traps to basically find your location. Uh, to be able to find out your device types, where you're at, what you're doing, and be able to zoom down on that. Uh, same thing with text messages on phones. Uh, a variety of different ways that we utilize that. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> WhatsApp, I just talked about. Same, same types of things. Uh, Google Voice. A lot of people utilize Google Voice. Why? Because they can change those numbers just like this. And so they'll do one, close one, uh, open one up do it, close one, and do that, and I think that they can't be tracked. But they're utilizing it either on their phone or they're utilizing it even on their computer. Why? Because it's VoIP, right? It's got to have a connection. So therefore, we penetrate that. We can then find out their location, what they're doing, uh, et cetera, et cetera, with that kind of information. Uh, website, social media, email piercing. Uh, one is that their, you know, website information. Uh, those of you that are in uh, cybersecurity and do, uh, you know, pen testing on on websites and web application security testing and those kind of things. You know, you know, there's a variety of pretty cool tools out there to get a lot of information. And uh, you know, we had one case, international shipping company that uh, they got uh, hacked, but they wasn't sure how. Uh, the problem was, and in that international shipping company is that they provided the insurance for the payloads coming into major ports. And though that, <clears throat> and consequently is that uh, by hacking them, what I could do is now go replace a certificate for a ship that wasn't there and put an actual, what looks like a certificate that I've got that payload insured. So I can now bring that into the deal. And, and consequently is what we wound up doing in, in, in testing uh, them was that, you know, they had their perimeter reasonably uh, secure but one of the developers, what they had done is they, you know, they had their test site that they used for testing uh, before they put it up out on the op open open source. And so what we wound up doing is, is uh, penetrating that, realizing that's where they were getting hacked from, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of information, the whole point being, there's a lot of information that gets leaked out uh, through a website. Device fingerprinting and ID. A lot of people, you know, think you got to have an IP in order to be able to prove case. Uh, but your devices throw off very unique uh, fingerprints, and by what your browser types are, what uh, what your operating systems are, what apps you're running, or that kind of information. Go ahead. Uh, you know, you can go to EFF, and uh, about 94% of the time, uh, you know, forget cookies. You don't need cookies for this is that you can fingerprint a device. And so I may have, uh, you know, I may have identified you as a suspect and I think, you know, I, I send something to you as the suspect and I wound up getting that device information uh, and IP information for that there. But the same token is, is that I think it's you as a suspect, but I now send you something totally different, okay, uh, that that as you regular person, and I do that, and guess what? I get the same device, but I had your home IP address. I now have your cell phone IP address, but I have same device type because of where you're operating and, and doing that. And it becomes pretty interesting information in order to be able to utilize. And then obviously with subpoenas, and we follow back up. But it at least gives us pretty good confirmation that we're dealing with the right person. <clears throat> there is... Uh, technology, um, we haven't used uh, this piece yet, but 
are looking into it in terms of technology, but a lot of the advertiser use, using this now is that they're able to do cross-device uh, identification. So, are you, because most people operate at least two to three devices. And so, the advertisers want to know who is utilizing what devices and be able to tie it to you so they can show you the right types of advertising. And these types of things are also being developed as uh, investigative tools in order to be able to tie to, to individuals. Uh, same thing with weaponizing websites. <clears throat> a lot of times that we have an environment where we have to go after uh, a particular person and we have to create a profile. And we'll build out entire websites that are designed to sell the story on that website. But those websites are totally weaponized and et cetera. And, you know, and they think they're going to Harvard Law or they think they're going to whatever. And, and you guys see this in cybersecurity, just using their own crap right back, to, right back against them. Uh, the difference is we're not hacking them. We're just basically fingerprinting them and do that, which gives us enough information to take them to court. Uh, go ahead. Same thing with social media. I actually used this attack on a, uh, we're doing a, a deal with a, with a law firm and about 350 lawyers and uh, how vulnerable they were. And is that, you know, the security was, oh, you can't hack us. We train all of our people and we do all this testing and our guys are smart at this and et cetera, right? And this was an old law firm. And at the time, what was going on, was, and then the client, one of their clients was Ohio State University. Uh, and, and I happened through, you know, through enumeration to be able to figure that out. And uh, so what I did is I came in as uh, the person that typically disseminates information to that entire law firm. And, and uh, you know, and I said, hey, you don't normally, you know, see this type of thing, blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, and, and I showed where the uh, guy that was being investigated, the Ohio State, was arrested. Well, it was all bogus. We made all that up, right? And I mean, out of 350 attorneys, I think about 78% click, click, click. All you need is one, right? So it's interesting uh, with that. But same thing, same thing with the, uh, same thing with LinkedIn. How many times, how many of y'all on LinkedIn? Okay. How many of you click invite, right? Oh, gotcha. Bing. Right? Real easy. Uh, text messages I've already talked about. Go ahead. Uh, documents, same thing. Ability to weaponize documents where we grab this information. Uh, open up this PDF. This is your recent pay raise. This is your recent, you know, whatever. Or this is confirmation of my payment to you through Western Union. This is whatever. Whatever we want. And, and that's the cool part about being an investigator, cyber investigator, is I don't have to be anybody. I can be anybody I want to be. And, and go after them from that aspect. Um, security updates. How many of y'all have security updates on your computers, right? Yeah. As you know, you can weaponize those? Yeah, how about that? Um, go ahead. So let's go to the next thing, a piece of information that is available to us as investigators. Um, CCTV. Is anybody on cameras today? How many, how many times do you think Average person is on a camera a day. Any idea? Guess. Huh? Um, in this country, it's a Republican Party. Want a job? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, so, anyway, um, <laughs> people have basically like guys like this. Uh, but the, uh, basically, so find my friends on LinkedIn and crack them on the camera and say hi to them on the internet. Tell them they have the right hand with the left hand up. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to uh, do the time constraints and whatnot. Go ahead and speak. Basically, 75 times a day is the answer to that question. Uh, go ahead and roll through to um, some of the um, cases that we work. Again, you're just seeing some of the stuff that we have. Uh, go ahead. Keep going. Case examples. Go ahead. Um, here's one where we actually alerted the FBI uh, in some of the intelligence we were doing where 
all of their information got leaked out and a name, address, you know, so their logins, all that kind of information was out on the internet. Uh, we found that, alerted them, you never read about it. Uh, and they shut it down pretty quickly. Uh, but, you know, this was one of the guys and, 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 uh, you know, go back a minute, FBI agent, you know, and, uh, and so at that point, just giving a point, we went and did intel on that person. And from a security viewpoint, this is pretty scary stuff, right? So here he is. We know where he lives. Uh, all that information. Uh, there's his family. Uh, so you can see how this can be utilized, right? Uh, to go after any target that you want to. Go ahead. Uh, CI agents, we did the same thing with, uh, that we found information on, uh, CI agents, uh, related to that. Go ahead. Uh, police officers, same thing. Uh, the Caliphate Army had, uh, posted the list, uh, out there. Go ahead. Uh, you just move forward. Let's go, go, let's go away the cases. And, uh, so here's a case ham uh, example. Uh, we got involved on in the, uh, celebrity hack, uh, with Jennifer Lawrence and a few other celebrities. Uh, they, you know, they had, uh, breached through their iCloud. Uh, in that scenario, we had to go out and find all of the pictures around the world. Uh, for a law firm, we had to do that, and we, uh, because of the technology we have, we were able to find all of those, uh, you know, basically in about a day and a half uh, with that, provide that, and then all the subpoenas and everything and all that information that went out. So we had the ability to move high speed for the law firm. Go ahead. Uh, here's one that we got. <coughs> uh, Snooky had uh, with uh, Jersey Shore, got leaked out. She went to the home. Home, you know, FBI, Homeland Security, Secret Service, nobody would take their case. Uh, we, uh, and, uh, so we took their case, got involved in it, uh, and then once we, uh, started tracking it, we actually tracked that back to the, uh, Lizard Group, uh, which then also got arrested by the FBI because we turned in that information to the FBI, uh, developed that case for them, and now we got the FBI to take interest in that case. And again, where when you put it together and you make it easy for them, they'll take the case. Good. Uh, here's one. Uh, this was a uh, publicly traded corporation CEO uh, that he got involved in a uh, cyber sex relationship uh, with somebody he thought was a legitimate girl. Uh, wound up doing that. They got nice video. Uh, then threatened him that they would expose him and his company and to all his contacts, and which they had, and gave proof that they had. Uh, and so you're going to pay me to the tune of $2,000 a day, and uh, there you go. And he was freaked out. His 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 personal attorney is the, is the attorney for Facebook. Gives you an idea of the level that he's able to play at. Uh, and they're going, to, we don't know what to do. All right. <clears throat> so we got involved. We traced the guys back to the Philippines uh, and basically then made them more scared of us uh, than they were of the uh, of the client, uh, or more scared of the client, I guess, if you will, than, than the client was of them, uh, and made it go away. We weren't after an arrest in that deal. We were just after making it go away. And because of relationships around the world, uh, we then surrounded them there and gave them notice, and they took notice. Uh, Go ahead. Um, High-level executive, Home Depot, female. Uh, start her and her husband was uh, well-known in Atlanta. Uh, and bottom line is they started getting these uh, extortion uh, calls or and uh, texts. Uh, and basically, they had pictures of her. She modeled when she was young. And, you know, they're exposing pictures and threatened again to put them all out and expose and hurt her and yada, 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 yada. And, and from there, <clears throat> we got involved. And they went to the local police. Again, they're being extorted. Uh, they're, you know, well-known in the community. The local police goes, ah, cyber, can't help you. Right? We got involved, and within a day and a half, we tracked the guy down, uh, some loser, you know, 34 years old, living with his 70-year-old parents, uh, you know, uh, up in... Um, Get the name of the town, just north of Atlanta, uh, Stone Mountain. There you go, that, that area. And uh, so we found him. We then got the police uh, interested. He's in jail today. Go ahead. Um, High-level executive, international bank, compromised uh, account. Uh, he is out of Hong Kong. Uh, they compromised his accountant. Uh, and 
uh, and basically stole $300,000 because he thought he was sending tax money. Wouldn't that be bad? You know, you think you're sending tax money. It's bad enough you got to pay $300,000 to the IRS, you know, and then nevertheless you find out it went to somewhere else. And so anyhow, uh, this guy had enough money and he was pissed. And he said, I don't care what it costs. He said, I, I don't care if I spend more than $300,000. I want these guys. Okay, we're good. So we tracked them down. Uh, and uh, it turned out that they were uh, funneling money through a what we thought was going to be a mule uh, here in the U.S. Uh, some guy, ex-attorney, 70-plus uh, years old, uh, working uh, out of about a $8 million home, uh, sitting on... Uh, uh, on the beach just uh, north of uh, Santa Monica, and uh, we knocked on his door, and, uh, and all of a sudden had all this information on him, and et cetera, and said, look, you know, just help us out here. We just want to recover the money, do that, et cetera. We won't turn him in the FBI. He cooperated with us, and then we turned him in the FBI. So uh, uh, this was the local case in Tampa. A uh, girl had been uh, uh, somebody that she had dated, had pictures of her, started extorting her, but under an anonymous name, uh, several text messages, uh, uh, spread it out on websites, 4chan, all over the world, uh, that it spread this information, went to the local police, they went, it's cyber ways, you know, it doesn't, that doesn't happen. And, um, but because of some relationships we had, we pressed the button, on that, got them to take the case, worked with a detective that turned out to be great because it was a female detective and then she took personal interest in it. We worked it through. Long story short is uh, we did our magic, uh, trapped him in a variety of different ways, proved who he was. He was a loser working in Winn-Dixie, yada, 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 just doing this and, you know, just out of, out of fun. This was the second time. He was a serial guy. He did this a lot. And, uh, and so anyhow, we wound up putting him in jail. Go ahead. Uh, $100 million insurance fraud, uh, company been, uh, been, uh, chasing a guy that took $100 million. He used to be an executive for a Miami bank. Uh, and, uh, they couldn't find him. Been after him for about two years. And, uh, we found him in about three days. Uh, unfortunately he was located in, uh, Venezuela. And, uh, he was protected by the government of Venezuela because we tried to coax him out of Venezuela. You know, he was a yacht broker too, so we were going to sell our yacht in another island near them and, you know, that kind of stuff. And, uh, he, he wouldn't bite and couldn't figure out why, but, uh, long story short is he was, he was in, uh, uh he, he knew he was in trouble and, and he was hiding in Venezuela and State Department said don't go there because you'll either be killed, kidnapped or arrested or something, but don't go to Venezuela. I took their message. Uh, and two. I think it's probably the last example anyway. We had another guy, top secret clearance, uh, with the military. Uh, he owned, uh, he and his wife bought, she, uh, she was a, uh, licensed massage therapist. But he got wind that she might be doing an escort service and that might affect my top secret clearance. And I need to prove it, but she was a model before and all these pictures out there, you know, she just tells me, oh no, someone's just got all that out there. And it was by an invite only. So you had to already be referred as a John in order to be able to remotely get in to this girl, blah, 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 blah. And, and, uh, so anyhow, we finagled some different, uh, strategies and were able to prove it was her and consequently they're not married anymore. Uh, so, uh, uh that was a useful case. Um, uh, and another, and this one is the, is the last one is a private investigator. Uh, he works for a billionaire. Uh, the, in AIDS, there's two camps. One that AIDS is real and another that AIDS is not real. Uh, the camp that is supported by the billionaire is, uh, uh, is the AIDS is not real. Uh, they have a PI that ex-law enforcement from, uh, uh, Los Angeles uh, Sheriff's Office. Uh, one of the guys that is a key whistleblower, they started attacking him in a serious way. They, uh, we've been working this case for almost three years. He's proven multiple times who he is. Uh, what it is, but because they filed bankruptcy, it went into the bankruptcy court. Bankruptcy takes a lot longer in order how how we how we got to do things. Uh, but this guy is basically a paid hitman uh, to take out people's reputation and do that and destroy them. And he's doing advanced calls because this guy's a doctor, he's a freelance doctor in sleep apnea, uh, and he would advance call hospitals so he couldn't get jobs in doing that. 
was tracking him, doing all kind of different stuff and whatnot. And he's not that bright, though. We caught him several times and proved it. And he'll he'll ultimately wind up uh, going to jail and also be sued for a lot of money. And what we're trying to do right now is work back to the billionaire and prove that that aspect. So anyhow, it just kind of gives you an idea. I'm I'm uh, I'm uh, done, but it gives you an idea of the kind of things that uh, happen around the world that doesn't involve the target breach. So thank you. <laughs>